welcome back you Jervis to my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. If you haven't been following me so far right now I am doing the like BPD series which is a short borderline personality disorder series basically just to give you the heads up about basically what's going down right now. Obviously as I've noticed I'm behind schedule in the way of recordings and everything else but I humbly apologize we can't obviously stop what we're doing from what was going on but hey and all further to do though, just to give you the heads up basically of what I've covered so far in this series especially is basically I have talked about what BPD is all about, suicide self-harm, basically like signs of the symptoms, the causes and the triggers, who's at risk, what do you need to know about BPD, recognising the signs and symptoms obviously, questions to ask you all about does your loved one have BPD. And also now I'm up to hopefully part 8, if I'm reading right, of the series, which is communicating with someone who has BPD. So in all further ado, though, hopefully you're enjoying my series and let's go. As we know, communication is a key part to any foundation of a relationship that we bond between either the, our loved one, our co-worker, our friend, and the like, as we know. But as we know, though... Communicating with the BPD is different and pretty much can be challenging on its own force field. People in a close you know, relationship with people with this kind of disorder, especially as an adult stage, often feel like they're talking with their loved one or to arguing with a small child. As I said before, the traits of the BPD is obviously that one minute they'll have their different characters risk characters changing bit, one minute they'll ask at your level as an adult and then the next it will swing to a child or vice versa depending on you know how it is. People with BC BPD obviously will have trouble reading body languages and cues or understanding the non-verbal content that of that particular conversation that you're trying to share with them. The main thing say things that are cruel to us, unfair or irrational. Their fear of abandonment can cause them to overreact to any perceived slight, no matter how small, and their aggression can result in impulsive fits of rage, verbal abuse, or even violence. The problem for people with BPD is that the disorder distorts the messages that they may hear and those they try to express. BPD expert and author Randy Krieger likens it to having oral dyslexia, however, in which they hear words and sentences backwards, inside, out, sideways, and avoid the context. Listening to your loved one and acknowledging his or her feelings is one of the ways to help someone with BPD, however, to calm them down. When you appreciate how a borderline person hears you and adjusts how you communicate with them, you can help diffuse the situation, as well as the attacks and rages, and build a stronger, closer relationship. Here are a few tips to remember while communicating with the person with BPD, however. We need to remember it's important to recognise when it's safe to start a conversation. If your loved one is raging, verbally abusive, or making physical threats to you, now's the time not to talk to them. Better to calmly postpone the conversation by saying something like, let's talk like a warm word, but calm. I want to give you my full attention, but that's too hard for me right now. When things are calmer, there are a few things to remember as guidelines that I feel that should be addressed to you all right now. Number one is, listen actively and be sympathetic, even though many people might try to be empathetic as well on this scale. Don't let yourself be distracted too much by the TV, computer, cell phone, or other either technical devices. Avoiding interrupt, Avoid interrupting or basically try to redirect the conversation to your own content, however. Set aside your own judgment, withhold the blame, and criticism and show your interest in what's being said by nodding occasionally or making small verbal comments like yes or uh-huh or mm-hmm. You don't have to agree with what's being said to make it clear that you're listening and sympathetic though however. But then again we need to realise that you know we can choose to agree to disagree and vice versa disagree to agree to a, to a standard point. Number th two, focus on the emotions not just the words however that the BPT is, sufferer is talking to you about. The feelings of the person with BPT usually communicate much more than what the words he or she is usually using. People with BPD need validation and acknowledgement of the pain they are struggling with. Listen to that emotion of your loved one. 
trying to communicate without getting bogged down in attempting to recognize all the words being used, however. Number three, do what you can to make that PP person, you know, feel heard. It's important that we need to be heard and understood and whatnot, like anything, because obviously, you know, without all these judgments and stereotyping that we don't usually do, we need to remove that and actually, you know, think about others besides ourselves and that need at that time. Don't try to make them wrong, however, when the argument will invalidate their feelings, even when they're not saying is what they're saying is totally irrational for us. Number four, try to stay calm even if the BPD sufferer is actually acting out on you. Avoid any defensive, getting defensive in the face of accusation and criticism, no matter how fair they may be. Defending yourself will only make your loved one angrier. Walk away if you need to give yourself time and space to cool down. Number five, seek to distract your loved one with, when the emotions arise. However, anything that draws your loved one's attention can work, but distraction is most effective when the activity is soothing. Try exercising, sipping hot tea, listening to music, roaming and pet, painting, gardening, or completing household chores. Last but not least, talk about things about other than the disorder. This is an important one because obviously many people basically tends to want to keep focusing on that disorder, blame it on the disorder or blame it on the person that has the disorder that they think that those people with different mental health disorders blame it on, you know, make up excuses. But I believe that we ain't attention seekers for the ones that people may tend to, you know, think about us as that because obviously we're just there to actually just try to seek out and want to know if people can actually listen to us and as we create an awareness, understand for each other. You and your loved one's lives ain't solely defined by this disorder. We've got to remember that. So make time to explore and discuss other interests that, you know, we all love to share and maybe just, you know, go on that. Discussions about light subjects can help to diffuse the conflict between the both parties. It may encourage your loved one to discover new interests or resume the old ones that they used to love and enjoy. However, we've got to be in mind though, in this last part, just to end this, don't let, don't even ignore self-destructive behaviours and suicidal threats because obviously as we know with many mental health disorders basically you know there will come a time when they are on the lows the low basically because obviously BBD and all these other disorders I've addressed coincides with one another so therefore what I'm saying here is basically when this is happening and we need to know the warning signs if they are going to act upon what they said then we need to seek professional help or call 111 if we're in New Zealand or 911 or some sort of helpline, you know, just to help us to get through it all. So basically this ends part 8 of the series. Give me the like for the thumbs up, basically. As well as showing that you're engaging. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Feel free to, you know, comment what I've been missing off certain bits and pieces. Because it's like I said, it's good to actually get people involved and hopefully get engaging. As I said, I'll challenge... Right now, it's the ones with all these different disorders that I've chosen to describe, maybe either in Mental Health Awareness Week or even just basically maybe now, if you feel it's the time for you to share your life stories of what you suffer from, how you go through with it all, basically. But as I said, also follow me on Twitter and Facebook on Ask Me Answers All, especially on Ask Me Answers All because I'm there trying to hopefully share some of these videos for people that may not have a YouTube channel but feel like maybe it's a safe place for them just to feel it over there basically. Also feel free to message me over there as well because obviously you know I'm not here to judge, criticize or anything. I'm just trying to here to support and help people in any way I can to be either a voice for the ones that are voiceless or just a voice just to reach out to all people that you know suffers from similar conditions as me so that they can get a better understanding. So all for the do, do what you love, love what you do. Basically, be kind to one another, love each other, love yourself, basically, be true to yourself, and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks for watching.